I am in my 40s. I work out for hours somehow almost every day. I came late to fitness about five years ago. Now, it's it's interesting thing that it's interesting to think that you can come late to fitness. I understand his perspective, and at the same time, I would say, with his permission, I would say, hey, if I can say something to you, if I'm allowed, you're never too late to find fitness or to 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 start working out. It's never too late. It's always a good place to start. It's there's always a good day to start working out because you're choosing all these awesome benefits. And uh, one of our clients, he's a doctor. He said, you know, from experience, he doesn't advocate it. He doesn't advocate what I'm saying right now. He's just saying from experience, you could, because the human body is so awesome and the human body is so robust and is capable of doing so many things. You could go into the wrong direction for 50 years. You eat junk food, be sedentary, lead a sedentary lifestyle, don't do anything, uh, consume some stuff. And most people can go wrong for five decades and then switch. Switch their life, com- turn life completely around and you can restore your body to almost 100%. And he, th- and he said, this is so awesome about the human body, the adaptability and the robustness. And of course, a lot of a lot of factors come into play. It's genetics, and you know how crazy are you going, and uh, how how you know are you going balls to the walls with your body all day? Uh, are you destroying it to its utmost capacity that you know normal people wouldn't survive for five years? It, you know, so many factors come into play. But you see what I'm saying. So coming late to fitness, you're never too late to start, my friends. Uh, I do it because my government permanently disabled me with severe chronic pain that come to find out I can vastly minimize with strength training and very frequent movement. And this, uh, this is something that plagues me. This is something that sometimes even breaks my heart. It's, uh, it's it, it, the system tells you, hey, listen, you have back pain, you know, Use some cream and take this medication. Doesn't go away. Okay, you're dis- you're disabled, or um, you you will suffer from chronic pain forever in your life. And sometimes it's not even you know be, 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 before the government steps in, it's the, the 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 health the health officials, the doctors, the the therapists, and these folks should, in my opinion, should tell you that. Through training and moving, you can decrease and almost eliminate pain, especially in the lower back. Because this area is so prone to pain because we sit all day and we have this hunched position. And all these factors come into play and make it so bad for our lower back. And of course, we stop moving. The physical activity recommendation went down from two and a half hours per week to about one hour. I think some statistics said. So isn't that crazy? We stop moving, but now we have to tell people stop, start moving again and you can minimize this pain. And there's even research that says, that, says, that says at least subjectively speaking, people are saying that strength training reduces back pain in their, in their uh, um, conscious um, understanding. And at the same time, the kettlebell is even stronger than just typical strength training or typical strength equipment because doing the swing will strengthen those muscles who are mostly responsible or, or who play a huge role in back pain and that is your glutes. So the swing is one of the best medications against back pain. And then he says, I keep hearing people making these comments about how middle age means you have to slow down. And we we hear this as well. We hear this as well. The only thing I notice is that recovery from heavy volume takes longer. So you need to be extremely careful designing a program. He talks like a coach. It's 100%. That's what it is. Because your body, when it gets older, you can still work hard with it. 
the only factor that you have to dial in is maybe you have to just work a little smarter. Step down from the no pain, no gain. Maybe the grace period is over for completely wrong technique. Maybe you have to improve your technique. Maybe you spend a little money with a coach or maybe you just, you know, you, you get better at, at, at programming your workouts. And maybe you have to understand, okay, now, and this ties in, uh, somebody asked me on, on our workout, it was, that was Saturday, right? It was Saturday, I used to 16 kilo. And there's something that I said recently in a live podcast that I want to mention again. It's always the same thing. Never lose respect from the weights you have mastered. It doesn't matter if it is an 8 kilo, a 12 kilo, or a 16 kilo, are you, and you've mastered it. Never lose respect because it only takes one second for you to injure yourself if you're not focused, especially if you're not warmed up. So I did the workout with the 16 kilo, and why did I do it? It's not that I couldn't have used with this workout schedule that we had, with this exercise selection that we had on Saturday. It's not that I wasn't able and that I wasn't thinking to choose a 20 or a 24. The thing was I chose the 16 because I knew my body needs a little bit more recovery if we work out five times per week with this heavy volume and 30 minutes of kettlebell work continuously working the way we do it for time is heavy volume. Is this heavy stuff. This volume takes time to regenerate and I'm 36 years of age, so I have to take care of my body. So I knew if we go in with the Saturday workout, I want to slow down in advance because Monday will show up and we will be streaming again, and I will be picking up a 24 and a 28. And this is working smart, thinking ahead, thinking long term, thinking what you want to do during the week. And it's so awesome. It's such a great comment. I don't know if I'm just lucky or if these people just have not figured out age should modify your programming and not really volume. Man, awesome. Can't add anything to this. Listen to this saying. You should modify your programming and not really your volume. Wow. I don't know the answer to this, but it is an issue. I think it is not adequately addressed. I think people repeat common wisdom that is wrong and never experiment to find out for themselves at least how their bodies handle this. I agree 100%. And maybe common wisdom is, we, we just, we had one client. He said, you know, um, when I was younger, uh, I was... 15 kilos lighter, and now that I'm older, I've gained weight. I think this is just the, the plight of aging and, you know, growing older, this just happens. No, this not just happens. So we started figuring out. I said, listen, when you were younger, you played soccer, right? Yeah. So you stopped playing soccer, what, five years ago? He said, yeah, about five years ago. Okay. So you were active. You were more active then. Yeah. You took more walks because probably back then you didn't have a car all day. Oh, yeah, I didn't have a car. Well, I had one, but uh, I had uh, a shorter distance to my workplace. So I was walking. Oh, okay. And I used to bike more frequently. Ah, okay. And then we found out, hey, it's an easy, people always look for rocket science, but it's not. It was an easy explanation. Hey, you stop playing soccer, so you stop burning those calories. At the same time, you stop walking because you had another workplace. At the same time, you found, you, 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 started, you had a relationship that consumed more time, so you didn't have more focus on sports and activities and all this stuff. And the person that you have a relationship with is not into sports as well. So... You stop doing what you loved because he was hurt. I think he hurt himself. He injured himself. And then uh, the factor of nutrition comes into play. And if you are younger, of course, and you move more, we can always say that metabolism, and this is always a quick or a fast metabolism. You know, if you have a very fast metabolism or you take stuff that increases your metabolism, you probably end up in a hospital because having a fast metabolism of increasing, it means you increase your heart rate, you increase the function of your hormones and function of, your, of, 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 of other organs, of your breathing, and people are dying from this. There, I, I, re I read a story from a young lady who, uh, it's a really sad story. She, she chose some diet pills that elevated her metabolism and she died because she burned up inside. Is it worth some extra calories? Of course it is not. So in, in that case, we found out, okay, hey, this, is, this has nothing to do with, with um, your age. This has to do with moving less and eating more. And people always believe, they always say this, you know, when you get old, you have to watch out. Of course, you always have to watch out. And maybe the grace period, like I said, is over. 
You have to watch a little bit more what you're doing now. You have to use some smart programming like he mentioned. And at the same time, it doesn't mean that you have to stop everything. And sometimes, and I don't want to go overboard with this because people throw around this word so many times, excuses. But sometimes it may be an excuse to say, okay, well, I'm 40 now, so guess I'm done. 